awkward. It's so long, it's just a stupid email address, but it's the one I check every day. and now it's kind of encompassed the whole United States. I think I have stories from just about every state. <clears throat> and it's just about put together well enough that I can send it into my publisher. As far as haunted locations in the South Bend and Mishawaka areas, they're, most of them are pretty low key. Um, people don't want you to know that they have a haunted establishment or a haunted house. <clears throat> So I can tell you basically where these places are located, but I can't give you the name or the address. Um, I was actually told that if I gave the name of one establishment that they would sue me. <laughs> so I'm not going to do that. Um, Mishawaka has a colorful history, starting with the Cam Brewery. And uh, there's actually four houses on that whole block, one on each corner, that the Cams lived in or built for their children. The best known one is the Hacienda in the 100 Center. And I don't think I'll get sued over this one because it's all over the internet anyway. Um, if you go up, especially into the second and third floor, the farther up you get, the creepier it gets. And if you're the only one seated up there as maybe a couple or three or four people, you're bound to feel the tension in the air up there. Um, the story goes that one of the Cam sons <clears throat> lived in that house. His father actually built it for him. And he lived there with his family. And he had an affair with his wife's maid. And a pregnancy resulted in that. So she went up to the attic and hung herself. And he shot himself then in the basement. Um, other than feelings, I've not seen anything happen there, but there's been managers in the past who were very guarded about letting anybody in that had um, anything to do with ghosts or the paranormal, um, and they wouldn't let you take pictures, and actually another group that we were affiliated with got walked out of the restaurant because they were trying to take pictures, and they wanted to go up to the attic, and she just wasn't too keen on that. We actually uh, got to do the hunt at the 100 Center, that place right behind there. We um, did. That was that was really fun. Uh, I actually knew the owner there, and he got us in there. So we went through all the, uh, where the uh, actual boiler exploded and 53 people died, and we got to go through the whole place there. It was, it was a fun hunt. It was, uh, and that was actually part of the old brewery. There are now apartments in part of the old brewery. Um, some of the businesses are still there. There's a a gay and lesbian bookstore there, um, and that kind of gives you a creepy feeling when you go in. I went in there looking for a specific book. for most people. Book. <laughs> and um, <laughs> they said that they have had books fall off the shelves for no reason. Um, they've had chairs pull out that they had pushed under the tables the night before. Um, Truman's, I think, is it still Truman's? Yeah. Is a bar there, and um, it's known for its gay crowd. And I actually went in there one night and was talking to the manager, and he said it might be haunted, but it's so noisy in here we'd never know if anything odd happened. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. It's been reported by staff that work at the hacienda that the fountain taps come on by themselves. They've seen glasses floating through. Um, a lot of it is more superstitious legend stuff than um, anything concrete. You always get that. As soon as something gets put on the internet, then you get the kids that, you know, want to add their own little stories to it, so you never really know what exactly is true and what's not. Then the bed and breakfast 
across the street, caddy corner from the 100 Center. That was also, in fact, it still bears the name, Cam House Bed and Breakfast. It's no longer a bed and breakfast. It was bought by a couple who just live there, but they don't rent their rooms out anymore. Um, they had trouble keeping beds made, and they thought that was due to one of the Cam grandchildren who died when she was two of, I believe, yellow fever. And they said they see the shape of a, a little body laying on the made beds, and as many times as they straighten it up, it gets messed up again. If you move on down Lincoln Way to the east, there um, is a big mansion um, right next to, what church is that? The Lincoln Way? Mm -hmm. Anyway, it's the Dodge House. The Dodge is originally... Is or scientific? Methodist, I think. Um, it has a plaque on it. It's known as the Dodge House. It housed the paper mansion for several years until she went out of business. And I was actually lucky enough to go in there and get an interview with her as she was selling her clearance items. And she let me do a walkthrough. She even let me go up into the turreted attic, which was creepy. There was a mannequin up there, and I didn't know it. And I came around a corner, and there stood that mannequin. And... Um, she said that she has gone upstairs several times and the mannequin has been moved in front of different windows. Um, and she knew nobody else had been in the building. She also had um, an employee who was sitting at the what would have been the dining room. She had a counter in there and she was doing the books. And it was after hours, nobody was in the store. And she said somebody in a taffeta dress, because she could hear the rustling, brush behind her, stepping around her, going into the kitchen. She immediately got up and ran into the kitchen. Of course, there was nobody there. They also have a poltergeist that likes to play with car lights, and their parking lot is out back, and various staff would see their car lights burning from an upstairs window and go out, and the lights would have been turned on from the inside. The lady who owned the paper mansion, she lives in a subdivision, I won't say her name, or the subdivision, and she was telling me that she thought that at least one followed her home because her lights kept coming on in her garage on her car. <clears throat> she also said that there was a girl who had been in a car wreck on a road right outside her subdivision, and she had been killed. And since it was a new subdivision, she's had several neighbors that have reported that there's a bloody girl, looks to be about 18 years old, kind of not really running up and down the street, but she was pretty hysterical asking people to help her. And when somebody would go out and try to help her, they couldn't find her. So that's kind of maybe a disconnected story, but it's a story nonetheless. If we move down just a little further, there's a huge stone mansion. Um, it is a bed and breakfast. It's also, at least in the past, a popular place to hold wedding receptions. And uh, probably the latest ghost story related to that mansion is a bride who in 1990, she was an Olympic runner, and she had decided to have her wedding held in this mansion. And 22 years old, Olympic runner, she had a heart attack and died and fell down the marble stairs at her groom's feet. And other people who have gone in there to look for a place to have wedding receptions have actually seen her on the stairs. Cool. Um, you've written a couple of books already. Um, you want to tell about those? They're technical manuals. <laughs> hey, I like I enjoyed them. I've read both of them. Um, I'm a geriatric social worker, and I love dementia patients, so that's, those were pretty boring books to most people, but this one will be a lot of fun. Oh, yeah. Um, so she's been out there. She knows what she's doing. She's a good writer. I, I enjoyed every one of them. She put so much personal experience into them, you know, I mean, so many stories and stuff, you know, especially since we already knew her, so. Thanks. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, they were great. Um, we actually met on a ghost hunt. Um, one of your first ones, we went down to, uh, where was that, down by Rochester, one of the old historic places down yep. there. You're doing research for the book. And I can't remember the name of that place. Me neither. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were supposed to meet up, we were part of another group at the time, the director, and everybody was supposed to be there, and it ended up being just us there. That's all that showed up. 
Um, we had so much fun, you know, and been a good part of the group ever since then. Loyal. That is yep. the old town of Loyal. Yep, the old town of Loyal. And what they did was they actually moved the buildings into this spot. It's a free museum. Um, if you go down 31 towards Rochester, you can't miss it. It's the great big round white barn. And then it has several other um, buildings on the property, all with their own ghost story, that have been moved to there. Um, the house, the white two-story house that's down there. That was one of the Trail of Tears or something like that. One right, yeah. yeah. They had moved that from downtown Rochester over to that area. It was a stop on the stagecoach. Um, it is haunted by children, and it's closed up during the winter. I think you can only get in there from, what is it, March through October? Something like that. And when they close up for the year, for the winter, um, they come back in and there's things disarrayed in there that 